I need help communicating with my husband. My name is Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and the Marriage Foundation has a free service. You can write in to our counselors and get some help. Most likely it's covered in one of our articles or a video, but for things that are unusual, we, we can help you out. Um, you can write in to us. And I'd like to uh, read to you from someone who wrote in. And she wrote, I'm gonna hold this up here. I have major communication trouble with my husband. Whenever we talk, it always turns into a bad experience and never is emotionally satisfying or connecting. He says he wants to connect very badly. He wants to solve this problem, but he does so in a very defensive manner. Let's say my dog died one day. Instead of coming home, taking me in his arms and letting me cry and talk about the dog, he wants to make a list of emotions and have me circle one. Next, he wants an intellectual discussion on that feeling followed by maybe an hour of him talking about himself and his feelings. He might start criticizing me for being sad over the dog and begin a distant psychoanalysis of me. In general, and what she means by distant is objective from his point of view, but cold. In general, I can't share anything with him without him saying, I am confusing him. We have to always stop, slow down, with him interrupting every sentence I get out, often in mid-sentence, and often he won't let us talk at all, but wants everything written down with us passing a notebook back and forth. He says this is the only way to connect. He has to have everything linear and logical or he gets very frustrated. He often gets very, very upset and critical. If I get frustrated with this, what do I do to make things more normal? <laughs> more normal. Oh my God. This, you know, this is fascinating. And, and I'll tell you why. And you'll be able to relate to this. We grow up and we go to school and we learn how to do algebra and we learn where the continents are and how weather works, but we don't learn how to balance a checkbook, do we? Practical. Everyone should know how to balance a checkbook. What else don't we learn? We don't learn anything about relationship building we definitely don't learn about communicating. Now, her husband obviously read all this nonsense somewhere and is applying it because in his mind, he is so utterly frustrated with his wife's communication that he's doing his very best to make things simple so they can both communicate. And it reminds me of an episode I saw on The Next Generation in Star Trek where uh, the Enterprise crew bumped into a race of people who only communicated th with metaphors. And they, they just couldn't connect. And as I'm watching this episode, I'm thinking, Men and women, not necessarily because men communicate in this way and women communicate in that way through metaphor, but because they're worlds apart, which isn't a problem if there's a basic understanding first off that men and women are not the same. They're not just biologically different. How could you, how could they try to sell us this nonsense that we're just 
It's just biological differences, but we're actually the same. Really? So you're telling me, based on this philosophy, that other than our biology, we're the same. Right. So a woman carrying a child in her womb for nine months, that's not going to have any effect on her psychology, right? Nonsense. But we don't learn these things with an open mind. We don't learn them at all about these differences, much less with an open mind. And, you know, there's the striving for equality without recognizing that equality means something at a very high level, but women are superior in some ways to men, and men are superior to women in some ways. You know, when I used to work with individuals, I only early on did I work with couples, then I started working with individuals. Because when you work with couples, you just have all kinds of conflicts ready to go off. So I worked with individuals, and if I couldn't get a woman to, to accept that she had to make some changes in whatever area, I would say you do realize that if you don't work on this, you're going to end up having to come back as a man. And not one woman in all the years that I worked with them, not one woman said, no big deal. Women don't want to come back as men. And I'm thinking, wow, because I sure don't want to come back as a woman. And so what, what is going on here is that you have to learn to communicate with your spouse, with your husband, in a way that works for him and not be judgmental about his inability to communicate with feeling to communicate with a broader understanding, broader than just the words that are being spoken. Men are very simple. She says so in her email, that he wants everything linear, straight, solid, 90 degree corners. And, and women don't communicate that way. You just don't. You wanna feel what's going on. So from your perspective, there's so much more you can do. You don't have to agree, obviously, maybe it's not obvious, but you don't have to agree to follow his rules. You could say to him, for instance, I would say to her, if I was the counselor responding to that, I'd say, you can tell your husband that it's okay for him to write things down and that you're okay with him not fully understanding what you're trying to communicate and then you have to be sincere. You have to be okay. You have to lose the expectations that what you want to communicate will be heard. You have to lose the expectations that he will feel your needs because chances are he won't. Now, you may say, why not? And I'll say this, I've got some, I have a car that doesn't have certain functions that I would like to have, but I'm not going to throw away my car. I still love my car. It doesn't have everything I'd like. Your husband doesn't have every attribute that you like, but he's got some attributes that you almost can't do without but you're starting not even to see those because of the frustration in your mind that is starting to block his good qualities. Why? Because you have expectations. You know, one of the big killers that we have as individuals going through life, it's expectations, desires. We're not free to experience life as life is handing itself to us. We want it a certain way. No, all I want is this. Oh no, I can't have that blue dress. It's gotta be green. You have 
unbelievable control over your mind. As a woman, you're totally connected to your heart, biologically. It's a gift that you have. It does get confused by emotions which mimic the heart, and they're not. But you have a tremendous advantage in feeling for, feeling compassion for, understanding. You have to let go. You have to let go of expectations that your husband is going to communicate the way you want him to. Because, and I'm just being honest with you here, the chances are he never will. The chances are you married him because he's a man. Not just a man, but he's a man. Well, what goes along with this man is this simplicity that also manifests in his communication. And it's up to you not just to accept him for who he is, but admire him for who he is. You need to alter what you actually want in your marriage. And now let's go there. Let's talk about what you should want in your marriage. Why did you get married? You got married for two primary reasons. They're the big reasons up on top, and under those are other reasons. The two big ones, see, I did a lot of research on marriage, and I realized that marriage is based on principles. They're simple once you learn them. The two reasons you get married, number one, you want to be happy. Not just happy, but you really want to be happier today than you were yesterday and happier tomorrow than today. And you want that to happen throughout your entire life. And you got married thinking that your marriage would provide that. Guess what? It's supposed to. You should know how to operate your marriage so that happens. The second thing that you want is the ultimate gift of life. Love. Unconditional love. Again, this is where your expectation should be. And you can do something about it. You should have ever-expanding love until the day you die. Why not? Why shouldn't you? You've been given the gift of free will and volition, which is the ability to operate your free will. Why shouldn't you have those things from your marriage? You don't because you never were even explained that those are the things you should have from your marriage. None of us were taught this, so it's not your fault. But it's not too late. And Communication is a facet within the context of a loving, connected marriage. You don't connect with words. You connect with your heart. You only use the words as a way of doing so. But if you're frustrated by his words, you're missing everything. So it's the frustration that gets in the way much more so than his inability to satisfy your desires. I hope that's not complicated. I'm trying to make it simple. I'll boil it down for you. Expectations block happiness, block love. They're impositions that the mind puts in between you as a soul and your husband as a soul. I've written a couple of books. They may help you. Subscribe to this channel. There's so much you can learn about marriage just through these videos. And if your marriage is slipping, and really only if it's slipping, then you'll need the course for women. So we could get you back on track. Now, there are some people who have good marriages and they get the course for women and the course for men anyway because they are they know they're missing something. They have it, they love their spouse and all that, but they really want more. And they read the book and they're fascinated because there's no one else doing what I've done, which is laying out marriage based on principle. So it's 
could be spread out right in front of your eyes so you will understand it. Marriage should be understood, huh? I mean, it's the biggest deal in your life is marriage. I'm going to leave you with that. God bless you. God bless your husband and your family. And thank you for spending time with me. I hope that you got something from this. I do hope so. God bless.